Hello, this is a quick overview of how to set up your tenancy for OCI secure desktops. Before we begin, I want to give a quick overview of how certain things work in OCI. OCI uses a construct called compartments, which are pretty much like directories in a file system. Compartments are used to house certain objects and services that you can create in OCI. Compartments are structured hierarchically. So you always start out with a root, root compartment in your tenancy, and then those compartments can have subcompartments and so forth. Now, compartments and policies and dynamic groups, which is what we're talking about here, they are actually tenancy-wide, whereas other resources, for example, compute, they live only in a particular region. Now, the important part is that the service, in order for our service to talk to your tenancy, we need a so-called so -called resource principle, and the resource principle is defined in a dynamic group. The important part for the resource principle is the resource type, which basically references our service. And when you define a dynamic group, you can also add to the dynamic group rules the compartment ID that this particular resource type should uh, take effect in. The issue here is that when you specify the compartment ID, that particular resource type is only available in the compartment with the ID that you specify. And in this particular structure, we have a compartment called desktops, and underneath we have two other compartments, Linux and Windows. And if I don't explicitly specify the OSID or compartment ID of the Windows compartment, our service would not be able to create anything in that Windows compartment. So the important part is dynamic groups are not inherited to the child compartments. In order to uh, uh, make it simpler, we can basically just define the resource type in the dynamic group, which means that resource type would then be applicable to every compartment in your tenancy. But where it actually will be used is then later defined through policies. Now, the important part is that policies actually get inherited. If you apply a policy to a particular compartment, all child compartments will inherit that policy unless you create another policy in the child compartment to override that previous policy. So in our example, uh, I color coded that I have to basically put in particular policies for the compartment that contain your network, your VCN and subnets. And you need other policies that you specify on a different compartment where you actually want to create your desktops in. And when I specify the policy on the parent compartment, in this case, desktops, the policies will nicely be inherited to all the other compartments that live underneath desktops. Depending on how your compartment layout is structured, you can cut down on the number of policies needed. For example, if the network compartment also is just a child of the desktops compartment, I only need those two policies because I can apply the policy to desktops, it gets inherited to the network compartment, and all I need to do is basically manage, or our service needs to be able to manage not just the desktops and the images, but also the network family, the VCN and subnet under the parent compartment. Now let's look how this actually looks in a tenancy that is already set up. Here we have a tenancy, and in that tenancy, I created the necessary policies in the root compartment that allow the OCI secure desktop server to actually interact with your tenancy. 
So these policies need to be in the root compartment. The other policies I can actually put on a compartment that is a child of root, but for simplicity's sake, I just put them all in the root compartment. And what it basically does is it specifies my resource principle, which is called ORM test DG. And this resource principle is now allowed through that policy to work in these compartments. And since my actual desktop compartment is a child of desktops, they get nicely inherited down the tree. Here I also show the resource principle, the dynamic group that includes our resource principle. And as you can see, here, I actually did specify the compartment ID, which is not very human readable. So in order to actually know which compartment this is, I would have to look it up every time or make a mental note. What I can do is I could basically just delete those two and the service would still work. And if at a later point in time, I created another sub compartment, I would be able to nicely create desktops in that new compartment without having to update the dynamic rule. Because whenever you add a new compartment and you use the compartment ID, you need to add it to the rules of the dynamic group. And once you have all of this set up, it is very straightforward to create desktop pools. One last thing I want to notice here, in policies, you have the ability to specify a compartment by name, which is nicely human readable, or you can also specify a compartment by its ID. The caveat here is since compartments and any of the other resources can be moved around, if you specify a compartment in a policy by its name and then move the compartment to a different location, the policy will no longer apply because suddenly if the compartment is somewhere else, the path to the compartment might no longer exist. The advantage of specifying the compartment ID is it doesn't matter where in the structure, in the hierarchy of compartments, this particular compartment is, the policy will always work. So you know the trade-off now, and it is completely up to you which way you want to go. I personally prefer the nomenclature of specifying the compartment names because it's easier to troubleshoot and uh, see if you did everything right because I hardly ever move compartments around, so I wouldn't run into the problem of suddenly a policy no longer working because the compartment has moved. And this concludes a quick overview of uh, how policies and dynamic groups work with compartments in order to enable OCI secure desktops in your tenancy.